Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. We have him back. It's Matt, the mortgage guy. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. So it's become very obvious to me that you and I are scheduled to speak every Wednesday. And when the Fed meets and they issue their talk or whatever, it's on Wednesdays. So we record this. We're recording this at 10.05 a.m. Pacific, so before the Fed announcement. And we do over-unders. Yes, sir. So uh, let's do that first. Uh, so heading into this meeting, uh, we'll we'll do this. What are the chances of 50 basis points, 75, and 100 for this meeting? What? How do you break that down from 100%? Um, I, I think I said it on my live on Monday. Um, go, if you haven't checked it out, go check out Matt the Morris guy on YouTube. Quick, quick shout out for, for, mm-hmm. for my channel. Um, and I meant to post a, a dang, uh, uh, poll on, on my channel. I forgot to, but I think that it's heavily, heavily weighted to 75 basis points. So I said 5% chance it's 50, mm-hmm. 5% chance it's a hundred uh-huh. and 90% chance it's 75. Okay. All right. So I'll do mine as well. There's a 0% chance it's 50. There's a 99.5% chance it's 75 and thus a 0.5 chance of a hundred. Okay. Well, when I said heavily weighted, I wasn't as, as, as heavily (laughs) weighted as Zuber, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's a lock, but here's a question. And I think this is actually more important. I think 75 bakes in obviously 99.5% chance. That's where I think they go. But here's the question. I don't give a rat's ass about the rate increase. I care about the Q&A after. Exactly. The Q&A after, this could be game changing. Because they don't meet again till September. Not to say they couldn't have it an uh, in, uh, intermeeting raise. It's just this Fed doesn't do that. At least hasn't yet. So I have to ask you, what are the chances they come out super hawkish to super dovish? They could say things like, Yes, we see the data is getting soft. We we like where things are going. We may not have to do as much. They could say that. Yeah. Or they could come out. So that would be super dovish. Or they could come out and say, yes, we see the data. We need we need three or four months of trend or whatever. We have more work to do. Super hawkish. So I think it's all about the Q&A. What do you think happens after the meeting? Are they doves or hawks? I, I agree. It's all about the Q and A, and that's really what we're waiting for, you know. Because, like you said, you know, whether it's ninety percent or ninety nine percent, like we know. Um, and for anybody who's watching mortgage rates, like the markets know that a seventy five basis point rate hike is coming. So, it's it's that is not going to affect interest rates, but how they talk afterwards can and will. That's why the markets expect volatility. Anything that any mortgage uh, loan originators subscribe to is saying, listen, get ready for volatility, decide which stuff that you want to lock. If, if, if there's volatility, what I honestly think, Mike, um, especially with this fed is that their talk track is going to be somewhere in the middle. Right. And I, I feel like Jerome Powell kind of leans on that where he's like, well, you know, we're still going to um, tr- go for our target of a Fed funds rate of three and a quarter to three and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, what we are doing is kind of working, but we'll st- continue to monitor it depending on economic development and other this. Not- and he'll dance around everything just and to say, say <laughs> we'll do what we do when we do it based on what we see. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what they've done historically, in, yeah. in my opinion. And, and and to your point, too, about like 99% that they're going to do 75, this hasn't been a Fed that surprised us a lot. No. Even <laughs> in, in cases where we're like, please come out and surprise us. Yes. Where we're expecting 50, hit us with 75. We're expecting 75, hit us with 100. The market needs it. They didn't hear our cries. And they've really kind of stuck to the game plan and been relatively vanilla when it comes to yeah. how they've rolled things out. I think you are super right, but I think this is the meeting. This is the meeting where Jerome Powell either becomes Paul Volcker or he's Arthur Burns. What you're describing keeps him Arthur Burns. Basically, he lets inflation get ahead of him and he's not getting ahead. I think because he has until September and he's going to have two more data points before the next meeting. I don't know what it is. And and I'm probably wrong. Let's just say that right now. I'm probably <laughs> wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. I believe he comes out and he shows the most most teeth or talons 
I think he is the most hawkish version of Jerome Powell we have ever seen. I think the fact that the bond market is down pisses him off. I think the fact that the stock market is doing better than he wants it to pisses him off. So I, again, this is the, this is his chance because he could come out super hawkish. He can let two more months of economic data show a three month trend. And then in the next meeting, he can pivot or soften or whatever. Jerome Powell, if you're hearing me and you're not <laughs> be a hawk, show some backbone. This is the meeting to come out. And then by the way, if, You'll know if I'm right because the market will tank and 10 years will go up. That's right, what, right. If I'm and, right, that's what yeah. will happen. And so for anybody listening who wants to know what that sort of meeting and that sort of talk track, what effect that would have on mortgage, mortgage rates would spike. You know, we would see 75, 100 basis points in pricing, not in actual rate, um, in immediate spike. If he came out and said, listen, I'm going to get more aggressive. I yeah. want to the market's the not listening beast. Yeah. yeah. Inflation. Um, although we're moving in the right direction, we're not moving fast enough. I'm if, if, if that's the talk track, which like you said, you're trying to speak it into existence, even though you don't believe in it or think that it's going to happen. Um, if that's the talk track, that is the case where we're going to see mortgage rates get worse. Um, in my opinion, there's not a, a very good chance at all that it's opposite of that. Right. Like he's not delusional enough to say like, yeah, you know. Oh, he's inflation. not going to come out and talk about pausing. He ain't doing that. Right. <laughs> Ex exactly. Exactly. And like, oh yeah, you know, inflation's going to come down naturally. I don't need to do anything transitory. More. So maybe, yeah. Was, <laughs> I had that word in the back of my head. I had that one loaded in the clip. I was gonna. I was gonna say something about transitory. That joke never gets gotcha. old. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see. And yeah. and definitely, folks are are. Um, you know, on, on pins and needles, not for the rate hike, yeah. but for the the talk and the discussion that goes on afterwards. And it's it's funny too if if uh, if anybody subscribes to any sort of rate watch, whether it's Barry Habib or whether it's um, any of these others, you can literally see the charts moving mm -hmm. as he's speaking. Yeah. And then you're like, oh my gosh, what happened there? And you pause and you rewind thirty seconds because you're not paying attention. You're like, oh, he said that. And that was what caused, you know, 15 basis point uptick in, in mortgage bonds. Yeah. Yeah. So I, again, um, I just feel this is his moment. Like th there's a time in the history book, this will be the meeting where he shows teeth or talons or whatever the right analogy is. He's got to be a big old hawk because he's got time. Again, I see the dominoes. He could be a dick today. He could kick the market in the nuts today. And then he could kind of be the nice guy in September. He has to do it today. Or else this just gets away from him. All right. One of my favorite sayings, Mike, we going to see. We're going to see. Well, hey, <laughs> I want to do, I want to kind of close on this because we've just said, both of us agreed. I think our average is 95%. They're going 75. So mortgage rates have to go up 75 basis points sometime today, maybe tomorrow morning. Right? Because <laughs> the Fed raises rates. They got to go up three quarters. Locked them in yesterday so that we'd miss that. This, this, this Dude, is, a, this is. I had somebody oh. ask me that this morning going, should I rate lock today? Because the Fed's going to decide, can I rate lock in the morning? Cause I don't want my five and a quarter to be 6% tomorrow. I'm like, right. And, not and, and how it works. Right. And truth be told, like I shouldn't laugh at it because like, I don't know anything about firefighting or being a nurse. And yeah. so I wouldn't expect people to know about mortgage, but hear us loud and clear the fed funds rate and the, and, and what the, the fed is doing does not, it's not the 30 year fixed rate mortgage. It's not a one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Right, right. Like over time, will it have an effect and what they're doing with monetary policy have an effect on 30 year mortgages? Yes, but it's not as simple as they click this rate up and mortgage rates go up. I, I looked at um, last month when the Fed hiked and over the course of the week after rates went down a lot after a 75 basis point rate hike. And so to our point where like what they talk about in the future of what they're going to do with monetary policy matters a lot more to the market yes. than this actual hike, this hike and, and, and a lot of stuff that's already been dot plotted, the market's accounted for it's yeah. baked in. Um, and the fed funds rate specifically is a rate at which the banks are lending to each other. This isn't the 30 year uh, fixed rate uh, mortgage. So know that again, to emphasize mortgage rates change every single day. They changed on Monday and Tuesday and today and tomorrow and Friday. They're going to change next Monday, next Tuesday. And 
Um, but it's, it's not a one to one ratio. I had that question right. and I'm like, well, good news. I'm talking to Matt today. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, whether you locked in yesterday, you lock in tomorrow. What what a lot of people did, and I and I agree with, is you locked in yesterday just because it's going to be volatile based on on the talk track. Yeah. And if, and if you could lock in, you know, five three seven five yesterday, it's not a bad decision. But do what I thought was comical is they thought they were getting ahead of a three quarter rate bump, and I'm like, that's not how it works. Right. Right. Yeah. Today it's five and a quarter. Tomorrow it's six percent. Not how it works. Not how it works. No. Yeah. Not how it works. Yep. So, um, where can people find you if they want to reach out? You're nationwide now. So uh, yeah, where should we, sh- reach we out? sure are. And and even the hard ones like like New York we've got now. So um, I don't know Nevada. That's a tough one. You got to have a brick and mortar office. But anyhow, 48 of the 50 states. Go to greatmortgagebroker.com. Fill out the form. Let us know where you're at. How we can help. If you're looking to get pre-approved. If you want to have true numbers. And a true pre-approval, that means you can actually submit offers and you know what to expect um, as far as how much you qualify for, what the payment looks like and whatnot. Uh, greatmortgagebroker.com. I've got a ton of um, you know folks that are, that are helping me with this and um, we want to help a lot of people all over the country. So there you go. Folks, do yourself a favor, work with a professional, work with someone who's going to help you understand that, you know, just because the Fed, Fed funds rate goes up three quarters doesn't mean mortgage rates go up three quarters. I I just had to have that conversation with you. I was I was shocked. This this individual was on the savvier side and 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 didn't quite understand that. So there's probably a lot of people that thought that. Oh, so. for sure, for sure. There's a lot of people. It's not 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 uh not uncommon, but we'll 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 help educate one person at a time. There you go. There you go, folks. Again, Matt, the mortgage guy, greatmortgagebroker.com. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Mike.